questions. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Michael Savoy, and today I'm serving as the chair of the accounting <clears throat> of the California Board of Accountancy Enforcement Program Oversight Committee. I like to call this meeting to order. I would like to note that CBA members who may view any committee meeting they do not sit on, but only as an observer, and will remain as an attendee until their scheduled committee meeting, at which time they'll be moved to the panelist participation. At this time, I will turn the meeting over to Mrs. Reed to take roll call and establish a quorum. When Ms. Reed calls your name, unmute your mic, state your name, and please remember to mute your microphone once you have stated your name. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines. Here. Dan Jacobson. Present. Dee Dee Owens. Here. Katrina Salazar. Present. And Michael Savoy. Present. And we have a quorum. Thank you. I would like to thank the CBA staff and the SOLID team for their assistance in facilitating this virtual meeting. The CBA's mission is to protect consumers by ensuring only qualified licensees practicing in public accounting in accordance with established professional standards. This mission is derived from the statutory requirement that protection of the public shall be the highest priority for the California Board of Accountancy in exercising its licensing, regulatory, and disciplinary action functions. Whenever the protection of the public is inconsistent with other interests sought to be promoted, the protection of the public shall be paramount. Before we convene, please be advised that the meeting is being conducted consistent with provisions of Governor Gavin Newsom's Executive Order N0821. Members of the public interested in participating in the meeting must join the WebEx meeting. Information and instructions are posted on our website and all lines are presently on mute. As I facilitate this meeting to allow for proceeding in an orderly manner, lines will remain on mute until I direct staff to open them for public comments. I will announce when we are accepting public comments on the various issues and staff will then open the lines as appropriate. Five minutes will be allocated to each individual providing comments. I would also like to remind committee members and others speaking during the meeting to please use the raise the hand feature. If you wish to make a motion, ask a question or make a comment. This approach is necessary to facilitate the meeting and ensure that the committee has the opportunity to complete its necessary business. I appreciate everyone's understanding. At this time, we'll move to agenda item one, which is public comment for items not on the September meeting agenda. The moderator will provide general instructions and then open it up for the public comment. Please go ahead. This is the moderator. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate in public comment, please follow the instructions. Simply click on the Q&A icon, which is typically located at the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen. And then in the Ask field that pops up, typically at the right um, side of your screen, type, I would like to make a public comment and make sure it is geared towards all panelists and just click send. And when prompted, click the unmute me button. Mr. Savoy, no requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please. Let's move ahead to uh, item number two, which is the approval of the July 23rd, 2021 minute meetings. If any member would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting, uh, please do so by raising your hand and wait to be called upon. 
Mr. Jacobson. I so move. Do I have a second, Mrs. Miss Dee Dee Owens? Yes, I second. Thank you. Uh, we have a first, we have a second. Are there any other member comments on the minutes? Are there any public comments? Ms. Salazar, is your hand raised? Uh, yes, it is. Um, I don't believe, I believe the minutes have actually been revised to remove my attendance at this meeting. I don't believe I was present, so I'm not sure if that is in the copy that um, is in front of the board. So one friendly amendment to update attendance. Thank you. Uh, staff, please take note of that. Ms. Reed, call for the vote. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines. Yes. Dan Jacobson. Yes. Dee Dee Owens. Yes. Katrina Salazar. Yes. And Michael Savoy. Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Moving ahead to item number three, the discussion and possible action to approve a legislative proposal to amend business and professions code section 5070.1 to update the language related to the denial of a retired status license application. Mr. Franzella, please begin your presentation. Thank you. Uh, good morning again, members. Uh, again, I'm Dominic Franzella and I am the CBA's enforcement chief. This agenda item uh, is brought before the board so that it has an opportunity to discuss a potential statutory amendment to business and professions code section 5070.1 regarding the retired status license approval denial process, specifically related to individuals who have a permanent restricted practice order stemming from a prior disciplinary action imposed by the CBA. So the CBA is being asked to approve the proposed amendment to BPC uh, section 5070.1, which members can identify and find an attach in the attachment to this item, to allow an individual with a permanent restricted practice order to be approved for a retired status license and direct staff to submit the language to the legislature. Members discussed this topic at the May meeting earlier this year, at which time they directed staff to work with council to explore necessary statutory changes, regulatory changes, or both to uh, put this policy in place. Uh, and members materials on this item uh, near the middle of page four and on the top of page five, staff have outlined the various changes to the statute designed to effectuate the policy to allow an individual with a permanent restricted practice order to be approved for a retired status license. Uh, first, the first change is to amend subdivision C. Uh, while this proposed amendment does not directly uh, affect the policy being sought to implement, uh, the change deletes the phrase, quote, otherwise punitively restricted, as this language was unnecessary and does not accurately reflect disciplinary orders of the CBA. Administrative actions ordered by the CBA are not considered punitive. Uh, the second change is to add subparagraph one to subdivision C. This new subparagraph adds the necessary authority to allow the CBA to approve a retired status license application to licensees with a permanent restricted practice order. It further clarifies that these licensees shall have completed probation as specified by the original order as necessary. The second addition is a new subparagraph two to subdivision C. This new subparagraph establishes that a licensee approved for a retired status license who, was pre who previously had a permanent restricted practice order in place at the time of the approval shall have the permanent restricted practice order reinstated should these licensees have the license restored to active status. Further, it clarifies that the permanent restricted out order shall remain in place until such time as the CBA approves a modif modification or termination of the restricted practice orders and licensees would need to seek such modification or termination via the standard petition process. So at this time, staff recommend that the CBA approve the proposed amendments to BPC section 5070.1, including any additional changes the CBA deems necessary and direct staff to seek inclusion 
of this language in a 2022 omnibus bill, seek an author to carry a separate bill, or include it as part of its sunset review process. So at this time, I'd like to turn discussion back over to Vice President Savoy, and I will do my best to answer any members' questions. Thank you, Mr. Francella. Are there any questions related to this item? Ms. Salazar? It's not a question. I just want to say that I appreciate the staff's work on carrying this forward. I think it is um, a good change that will benefit both the licensees and also enhance the consumer protection and transparency. So thank you for all the hard work on moving this forward. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? If not at this time, I'd like a motion. Ms. D. D. Owens. Uh, yes, I move to adopt the staff recommendations as proposed. Thank you. Ms. Salazar. I'd like to second that motion. Thank you. Is there any other uh, comments? From the members, are there any public comments? This is At the this moderator. Time? Yes. I apologize for interrupting there. This is the moderator. I've opened up the Q and A. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen. If you would like to participate. Click on that Q&A icon, typically located at the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen. Type, I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. Mr. Savoy, I see no requests. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please. We have a first, we have a second. Ms. Reed, call for the vote. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Dee Dee Owens? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. And Michael Savoy? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Are there any agenda items that members would like considered for the next meeting? Seeing none, uh, moderator, I'd like to see if the uh, public has any items requesting. Thank you, this is the moderator. Members of the public, the instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click on that Q&A icon, typically located at the bottom of your WebEx screen. Type, I would like to make a public comment and send it to all panelists. Mr. Savoy, no requests have been submitted. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please. Thank you. Seeing none, at this time, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Thank you all.